الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافي مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي أرسله أرسله الله إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونزيرا اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين وأوصيكم أيها المسلمون ونفسي المذنبة بتقوى الله تعالى وأحضكم على طاعته وأنهاكم عن مخالفته يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فيا عباد الله Dear brothers, dear sisters Today's khutbah is about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he dealt with children and how he dealt with youth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heart with the purest of all hearts, alayhi salatu wa salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was beloved by all those around him. And he changed all those around him by who he is, by his personality, by him being the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emigrated to Medina, Ummu Sulaym radiallahu anha came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and told him, Khadimuka Anas. She gave the Prophet her son, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Anas ibn Malik remembers this. Everything that happened that is good that happened to me happened because I was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas ibn Malik reported that he said, Khadamtuhu Ashra Sini. He started serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was 10 years old, around 10 years old. And he served him for 10 years. And Anas ibn Malik relates. He says, فَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ فَعَلْتُهُ لِمَا فَعَلْتَهُ قَطْ وَلَا لِشَيْءٍ لَمْ أَفْعَلْهُ لِمَا لَمْ تَفْعَلْهُ قَطْ He never said, all of us know how children around the age of 10, around the age of 8, around the age of 12, 11, they like to play, they like to cause trouble, they like to, they may forget. You send them to run an errand and they forget. Anas ibn Malik reports that he, the Prophet Sallallahu never told me for something that I did that I wasn't supposed to do, why did you do it? And never said anything about something that I didn't do, that I shouldn't have done, why did you do it? For 10 years. He never said this. For 10 years. When people, when when the Prophet ﷺ immigrated to Medina, everyone gave the Prophet ﷺ something, or they tried to give him something. Umm Sulaim was so poor, she couldn't give him anything. She couldn't give him a gift like others did. So she said, I'll leave my son with you to serve you. If you need anything, my son will help you. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu. And <clears throat> Anas ibn Malik, being a child that he is, he did forget. And few times the Prophet ﷺ sent him to do things. And then when he leaves the house, he sees children playing and he starts playing with them. And one time the Prophet ﷺ saw him playing instead of doing what he asked him to do. But over time, Anas ibn Malik 
learned something from the Prophet He learned discipline. Discipline of the body, discipline of the mind, discipline of the soul. And one time, the Prophet sent him on an errand. And his mother saw him. She said, Anas, where are you going? He said, I have to do something for the Prophet She said, what is it? He said, oh mother, innahu sir. It is private, it is confidential. I cannot tell you. His mother told him, Anas, protect the secret of the Prophet Do what you do in secret. If he sent you for something confidential, do it in confidence. Such was Anas radiallahu anhu. One time, his mother came to the Prophet وسلم, and asked him to make dua. He said, Allahumma barik lahu fi ahlihi wa malihi wa waladi. He said, oh Allah, bless him. Give him blessings in his family, in his wealth, in his property, and in his children. Anas relates later on, he says, he was one of the longest living companion after the Prophet He lived for about 120 years. And he said, وَحَدَّثَتْنِي بْنَتِي أُمَيْمَةً أَنَّهُ مَاتَ لِي مِنْ صُلْبِي أَرْبَعُونَ وَلَدًا He said, my daughter Umayma, because he outlived all his children, or many of his children. He said, my daughter Umayma relates to me that 40 of my children, my own children, died while I was alive. He said, all other lands that the companions had, they produce crops once a year, except for my land. It produces crops twice a year. Hmm? By the blessing of the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Such was Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. The Prophet ﷺ had a habit that whenever he sees children, he used to say, Assalamu alaikum. He would initiate a salam to children. And one time he initiated salam and Anas was among those. So later on, Anas radiallahu anhu, whenever he sees children, he would say, Assalamu alaikum. And he used to say, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yafaluhu. Imagine the head of state is waving to you as a child and saying, Assalamu alaikum. And he's, he's paying attention to them. The Prophet sallallahu used to visit the Ansars and used to initiate salam to the children of the Ansar, and used to pat their heads and take care of them, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he made dua for the Ansar. He said, Allahumma ghfir lil Ansar, wa abna'i al Ansar, wa abna'i abna'i al Ansar. He said, oh Allah, forgive the Ansar, and the children of the Ansar, and the children of the children of the Ansar. That was his attitude toward not just the generation in front of him, but the next generation, and the generation after that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treated Anas in the best way possible. And people, when you treat them well, when, when we feel that we're treated well, our hearts is won by those people that treat us well. Ihsan, being treated well is a cause of love. Why would you love a person? There are five causes of love that Imam Ghazali uh, compiled in the Ihya. And if you look at all these causes of love, they exist in the Prophet Sallallahu And they exist more perfectly in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Imam Ghazali would say, how can one not love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when all the causes of love exist in him? How can one not love the Prophet ﷺ when all the causes of love exist in him? And Anas radiallahu anhu used to say, "Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahsan al-nasi khuluqa." The Prophet ﷺ was the best of all people in good character, because that's what they witnessed. Why did they love him? Because kana mawhuban mahbuban. Allah gifted him, and his personality is a personality that, is, that can be loved, even before Islam. Even before Islam. 
Before Islam, Arabia was an anarchy, complete anarchy. If you leave your tribe as a child, you may be kidnapped, you could be kidnapped, and you could be sold as a slave. And actually one person was that. His name is Zayd ibn Haritha, that all of us know about. Zayd ibn Haritha belonged to a family in one particular tribe. He left his tribe one day, he got kidnapped, and he was sold. He ended up being with Khadija radiallahu anha, before Islam. So he became a servant, a slave in the house of Khadija. When Khadija married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zayd ibn Haritha became the servant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He ended up with the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And he experienced that. He experienced the personality of the Prophet. He experienced his character even before Islam. His parents, his family were looking for him, were searching for him. Then they heard, they found out that he is in the house of Khadija. He is in the, under uh, a person called Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, one of the prominent family of Quraysh. So they came to, they came to Mecca hoping to get back their son. They met with the Prophet Wasallam, that's before Islam, and told him, whatever you want, we'll give to you. Give us our son back. He, alayhi salatu wasalam, told them, I give you better than that. Why don't we ask him? And if he wants to go with you, you don't have to pay me anything. You just take him. And if he wants to remain here, ahla wa salam, welcome. So his parents said, well, his, his, his father and his uncle came. They said, well, how can one lose? We can never lose. Who in his right mind would refuse to go back to their family and stay with the with the people that, uh, that he was sold to. They said, yeah, we accept. So they called Zayd ibn Haritha and they asked him, would you rather go with us or would you rather stay here? He said, I'd rather stay here. I'd rather stay with the Prophet His father and his uncle were shocked. Not only they were shocked, they were actually humiliated. Because how could they go back to now to their tribe and say that our son preferred to stay with the person who is serving? How is that possible? The Prophet ﷺ noticed that. So what did he do? Before they left, he made a public announcement. And he said, Zayd ibn Haritha is free. And then he said, Zayd ibn Haritha, I adopt him as my child. And he is now like a blood relative of mine. We inherit from one another. So the father and uncle were, were shocked again because they got his, his, their son became one of the most prominent family in Quraysh. That's way more than they bargained for. They went back to their tribe in honor, not in humiliation. They weren't ashamed because their son remained, became free, but after he became free, nothing changed. He became the son of the Prophet but he continued before his, his family came, his father and uncle came, and after they came, Alayhi Wasallam treated him like a friend, treated him like his son, treated him like, because Alayhi Wasallam taught all his companions that you eat with your servants together. They don't eat alone. You treat them as part of the family. That's who he was, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's before Islam, and that's after Islam. If we look, when the Prophet immigrated to Medina, some companions were born the year he immigrated. Some companions were, were, were very young. And all those companions, each one of them had a particular story with the Prophet You take Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, even non-Muslims. Imam Bukhari relates that a Jewish boy used to serve the Prophet The Prophet hired him for a fee to do some work for him, to run some errands for him. And the Jewish boy experienced 
the character of the Prophet That's after Islam. One day, the Jewish boy didn't come. And the Prophet inquired about him. What happened? And he was told that the Jewish boy is sick and is about to die. His sickness is, is terminal. So he went to visit him. That was his sunnah, visit the sick. And he visits the sick for a short period of time. You don't stay for a long period of time because they're under stress. So you make visiting the sickness is always short, unless they want us to stay. He went out of care for the boy. There is nothing in return for the Prophet and the boy is about to die. So when he, when he saw his state and that he is very serious, he invited the boy because the Jewish boy was, was an adult by that time. He was after the age of puberty. He invited him to become Muslim. And he told him, Aslim. The Jewish boy looked at the Prophet and then looked at his father. He doesn't want to disobey his father openly. But he wanted to respond to the call of the Prophet He was waiting for his father to say something. His father said, answer Abu Qasim. Give him a response. And the Jewish boy became Muslim, and then he died. And the Prophet says, Alhamdulillahi lazi anjahu. Praise be to Allah that saved him. Out of care, he wanted him to be saved, alayhi salatu wasalam. We can go on and on and on about stories, about the Prophet sallam, and children, about the Prophet sallam, and youth, about the Prophet sallam, and young girls, even some of his wives that were young, like Sayyidah Safiya. When someone tried to um, make a statement belittling her, the Prophet ﷺ told her, like, raise your head. He told her, you are the daughter of a prophet. Because she descends from Harun alayhi hmm? salatu. And you are, your uncle is a prophet. And your husband is a prophet. So why are you ashamed? Raise your head. No one can belittle you. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Our responsibility towards the Prophet ﷺ is to be like him, with our children, with our youth, with those around us. Our character should reflect his character. أقول هذا القول واستغفر